The second part to the PRISM online marketing strategy framework is the operation I call convert. Now convert is a very interesting uh, part of internet marketing because as you see on the screen there, my favorite kind of soup, tomato soup, and a fork inside of it is really the best analogy I can think of for uh, website traffic today. Most people, statistically, 99% of people who come to a website are going to leave that website without doing anything, meaning they'll take a look at your site, they'll browse around, they might even read some blog posts, but 99% of them will leave without ever emailing you or calling you or uh, let alone making a purchase. Now that's a shame, that's a tragedy if you're a website owner to spend all that time and money and to only get 1% of the people to uh, to do anything on your website. And statistically, that's what happens. Most e-commerce sites, uh, according to Google statistics, uh, the average conversion rate for an e-commerce site is 2.5%. But that's when you take into account the big sites that really know what they're doing, which is Amazon and uh, Zappos and the big online retailers, which have conversion rates of up to 15% sometimes uh, during, during different promotional periods. And they really skew the overall statistics for the entire internet marketing world. But most sites have about a 1% conversion rate when you take out the top sites that really, really know what they're doing. And the reason they have that low of a conversion rate is because only 10% of sites in the world test anything on their website. They do conversion rate optimization. So that leaves the other 90%, which are the ones that have the 1% conversion rate, doing nothing to their website. So it's any wonder that the large internet companies all have one thing in common, which is they all do uh, religious fanatical conversion rate optimization testing and implementation on their websites. So a convert strategy is a bit more involved and complicated than most parts of the internet marketing strategy and that's why a lot of people shy away from it. It's, it's a tremendous investment in time, money, and expertise to get this strategy right. But I'm going to go through how it's done and also try and show you that it can be done for a lot less money uh, than you think think it can. It's not just for the large sites anymore. There's a lot of tools out there which are designed to allow small and medium-sized businesses to run conversion rate optimization. The first thing we'll talk about is landing page design, which is a very specialized part of conversion rate optimization. Then website design and redesign, user testing, analytics and heat mapping, website testing and optimization, and then website speed optimization, website commercial production, and then finally, again, in asterisks, email marketing, which is the glue that holds together the entire internet marketing strategy. So first, we'll talk about website design and redesign. There's this phenomenon out there on the internet called user-learned behavior. So if you run a website that sells uh, a regular product, you might not touch your website for two or three years and make any updates on it because you don't have time, you don't have money, and you're going to focus all of your time on search engine optimization now that you have a good website. Well, that, in, in, in my experience, is a mistake because if you don't touch your website, you're going to actually fall behind the arms race of what I call user-learned behavior. So an example of this is Amazon. Amazon, if you follow it, and most of us have Amazon accounts, they're constantly changing and updating their site. And if you've noticed, they've come up with one-click shopping now, which makes it ridiculously easy, almost scary to log into your account, easy to uh, buy a product. And they're continually streamlining the process. So because all of us use Amazon, we start to get lazy and get used to that kind of uh, ease of use when we're when we're checking out. Same thing when you go to Expedia or other travel websites, uh, the large ones that most people use. So then when you go back to a regular website of a small business owner who hasn't updated their site in two or three years, they've fallen farther and farther behind Amazon and the large sites which are constantly updating and innovating their websites. So you actually will lose ground. You can see your conversion rate drop on your site just because you fail to keep up with some of the innovations that are happening in online technology. Fixing a site is often harder than starting fresh. 
and above the full content is critical. So if you've ever picked up a newspaper, you have two uh, parts of it. One is a place they call above the fold, which is where it lays down uh, folded. And then underneath it, when you flip it over, that's what it's called below the fold content. Newspapers always put the best content above the fold and everything else goes below the fold. And then after that, anything off the front page really is inconsequential news in their mind. But they always try and lead with the best headlines, the best photos above the fold so that they can get people to actually pick up the newspaper and buy it. And the same thing happens on the internet. A website, typically, you have to scroll down to see the whole page. Well, most companies understand now, the ones that are testing, that above the fold content is really the most critical part. Because if people land on your website, they don't like what they see, they're not going to scroll. They're just going to immediately hit the back button or they're going to type in another website into the browser and leave. So above the fold content is really critical and you should take a look at everything that you have on your site. Do you have a book now button? Do you have some kind of uh, call to action where people can give you their email address? Do you have a phone number? Are they all above the fold? And you always want to look at that because if you make small changes, you can have a big impact uh, in the above the fold area on your website. Simple is better. A lot of people like to design websites for themselves, like it's a beauty contest. Well, most people, when they go to a website, they just want to get it done. They do not want gorgeous Flash, which is, which is why Apple has recently uh, taken Flash out of uh, their platforms, which they support, and has killed Flash websites in the process. Um, so if you have a Flash website, you really should invest in a redesign very quickly because no one can see it on their iPhones or iPads. And then finally, uh, quality and credibility indicators. On your website, you really need to show that you're a business, a real business that has real credibility. So if you have press releases, if you have testimonials, if you have other uh, trade associations that you can put on your website that you're a member of, that people, your clients would understand, those are all really critical. So the next part of uh, or website optimization is landing page design. And this is micro-targeting. Simple pages to drive action. So if you're sending out an email to a list, a lot of times it's not good to send them to your homepage. In fact, most times what you're going to want to do is design a very simple landing page which gives them as few options as possible aside from the option that you want them to take. So you take away the top navigation bar, you you take away a lot of the extraneous stuff that you put on your storefront on your homepage because that needs to speak to a wider audience. And you narrowly target this landing page for the specific audience. So if you're emailing a list that has a certain uh, common, common thread through it, you write to that list based on what they're interested in. If you're doing an AdWords campaign and you have a bucket of AdWords a group of AdWords that's that's focused on a certain uh, segment of your industry, you would e actually write the landing page to include the AdWords, uh, the keywords that you're targeting, uh, so that when people come to your site, they see the same keywords that they typed when they went into Google. So that is really highly targeted uh, marketing, which will increase the, your return on investment on your advertising efforts. Sometimes you can double, uh, up to double your efforts just by creating better landing pages which will inspire action. And then you can match your banner and text ads with your landing pages. So if you have a graphic banner ad, you want to make sure that it looks visually uh, like the landing page that people go to so they have continuity. And then finally, uh, the thing to remember, just like in website design, is simple is better. You really want to uh, make your landing pages as easy as possible for people to follow and really uh, drive them to that one action that you want them to take. User testing. So most of us do user testing by asking our mother and our friends what they think of our website. And no one likes to tell someone they have an ugly baby. It's just not something you do. And your website is like your baby because you created it. And no one who's friends with you is going to tell you what they really think of it. And a lot of times they don't have expertise anyway. So they might think it looks great genuinely. But they don't really have expertise. So you need to go and find, and you can do this usually for as little as $40 a session, go find a user who's independent, who's in front of a computer screen, and will videotape their entire uh, session 
on your site and they'll talk as they're going through the site and you can define the goals that you want them to take on your site and then you you take that feedback and they'll they might have a lot of uh, uh, critical items for your website and they also might tell you what they really like about your website and it will reinforce the good things that you've done and and, co and cover potential challenges uh, that you have on your site that if you would just spend a little bit of time and effort solving you could have a much higher conversion rate on your site. So user testing is something a lot of people are scared to do because they don't want to hear negative feedback, but it's critical and you really need to get over your own pride and just invest in user testing. So user testing is great, but it only goes so far because even a user sometimes doesn't know what they really want. They might tell you one thing, but their actions will do something very different. So the way to balance user testing is to uh, install Google Analytics and heat mapping. And these two, uh, two technologies really help you to see yourself. And Google Analytics is an amazing tool and it's free. And it's something Google provides all of their business owners or website owners so that you can better serve Google's customers. If, and, and it's a very self-serving piece of technology for Google because if Google sends people to websites that they don't like, even if they're relevant, but people don't take action on them, Google sees that as a problem because they want more and more people to find something and actually take action on websites. They actually are looking out for your best interests because it's in their client's best interest to solve their problems. But Google Analytics is something, when I talk to business owners, half of them don't even have it installed. And of the half that do have it installed, most of them have trouble with their password. They don't know it or they haven't looked at it in a couple of months. So even if you have it installed and you're not using it, then really it's just, it, you might as well not have it installed. And it matches up to the rule that 90% of businesses do not test their website. So the 10% that do usually follow analytics religiously and the rest of them don't look at it because they're scared, they're intimidated by it, or they know that they're just overwhelmed and they don't have time to figure it out. So in, in Google Analytics, you can set up goals like a shopping cart checkout or someone signing up for an email. And then you can even set up funnels, which is a series of goals where you track people from the home page to your product page through the two or three pages in your shopping cart process. And that's called a funnel where it narrows people down to one point where you want to track uh, definitive action. And you can see where people are leaving the funnel and why. And Google will tell you which pages are most popular, how long people stay on certain pages, which page everyone exits the website from, which page people are coming into the website on. And they'll also show you the keywords that people are using to find you or the traffic sources or referring sites that are driving traffic to your site. And then finally, heat mapping matches with analytics for analysis. There's heat mapping software out there which will record and give you a statistical sampling of where people's mouses are hovering on the site. And where people's mouses are is generally an indicator of where they're interested um, on your site. And that's a way for you to see what parts of your sites are good and what parts you might need to move around or change the color or maybe change the copy based on uh, the goals that you want your clients to take. You can also use heat mapping software to record visits to people with people on the site. And this way you can view their entire visit and see where their mouse is clicking, where they're pausing, where they're leaving. And you can really get an amazing amount of information just by watching someone and what they do on their site. When they do, when they say how they feel, a lot of times it's very different than how they actually act on your site. So now you're ready to actually start testing on your website. And before you get to testing, you should do user testing, you should install analytics, you should install heat mapping, and then finally you can come up with a plan. Just like anything, testing needs to have a real strategy. You can't just go out and test something that's not important. And when you look at a funnel, you really want to start at the top and work your way down. So after you develop a, a test plan, typically the test plan is going to focus on the top level of the funnel, which is your overall site bounce rate. So the bounce rate is the number of people who come to your site and leave without taking any further action. So they might come to your homepage and stay for anywhere between 5 seconds and 30 seconds and then leave. Typically, sites have a bounce rate of as high as 70% 
which is two out of three visitors will leave without doing anything, or uh, as low as 30%, which is actually really good, which, which means that only one out of three leave without taking some kind of action. So after you get people to realize that you're a credible brand and that you have something interesting for them, then you convert them into the next part of the funnel, which are browsers. Now this might be, if you're an information site, it might be reading further blog posts, or if you're selling products online, it's probably going to be product pages where people can go window shopping on your site. Then after that, you convert people. If you do convert uh, 30 to 60% of these people to browsers, then the next part is early waivers. And this is uh, people who go onto your site and then they click on the product page and then they might click into more information or even begin the checkout process. And at this point, they might have doubts about your credibility, about uh, your customer satisfaction, or any number of things. And then finally, you have your late waivers, which are people who are really serious about buying. They've, they've overcome their early objections based on quality. And now they're probably hung up on a little detail like you don't accept the type of credit card that they want to use or they don't understand something on the checkout page or there's some field that they don't want to fill out that they think is mandatory. And then finally, you have conversions. And conversion rates can go anywhere from 1% to 5%. But typically, if you invest in a long-term testing strategy, you can go from 1% to sometimes 2 or 3% conversion rate, all the way up to 5% in, in some cases, although that takes a lot of time and effort. And when you increase your conversion rate from 1% to 2%, that's a 100% increase in sales with the same amount of traffic, which can make a day and night difference between your business's online performance. And then you can go use that money to go get more traffic because you know that it's going to convert at a higher rate. So speed testing and optimization. Speed testing is the silent killer, or sorry, speed, website speed is the silent killer on the web of websites. The standard load time goal for any site is actually, should be three to five seconds. And in fact, most major sites have a goal of two to three seconds or less um, to load their site. And if you see this site here, the first view is, is 10 seconds, and the repeat view of the site is 4 seconds. Now, after speed optimization, the site is now down to 5 seconds and a repeat view of 1 second on, the, on their speed load time. But you see this website analysis of their site shows you, uh, at that time, how slow their site was loading, and more importantly, what elements on their site were causing them to load that slowly. Every second costs you visitors. Uh, studies show that uh, for every one second you can have a, for every one second past uh, three seconds on your site that it takes to load, you start to get people annoyed or impatient and you can have a, a, an appreciable uh, drop in your conversion rate. And, and this is usually something on e-commerce sites that's critically important uh, throughout the funnel. Uh, programming protocols is one way to fix your sp the speed of, of loading on your website. And then also there's some advanced software protocols, which as soon as you've le reached the limits of your site in terms of uh, reformatting the programming, you can get some advanced software that allows you to uh, deliver all of that programming package in a more uh, integrated way to uh, increase your loading speed. And most major sites have advanced software tools uh, that are proprietary speed optimization that they put on their website, and that's why they're able to load so fast compared to most smaller sites. And finally, website videos. Website videos uh, typically can have a nine, up, an average of a 9% improvement in conversion rate, and this is just simple videos where someone gets up and talks and delivers their message um, in in a uh, in a video format rather than print format. Now, this is not constant. Some people prefer to read. Depending on the industry, if people are very busy, uh, they might not they not, might not prefer videos. So this needs to be tested. But uh, typically, in a lot of industries, people are lazy and they're used to watching television commercials and they like commercials and they don't mind if your commercial is not beautiful and perfectly polished because it's a web and they're used to seeing that kind of stuff on YouTube and websites. Um, simple works. 
This is not the same as television. And more importantly, you need to make your videos easily translatable to mobile devices because more and more of traffic on the web is now going through iPhones, iPads, and the uh, uh, Google Droid equivalents um, on Samsung and those other devices that are coming out. That the, the tablets and the mobile devices are the future of computing, and you need to start uh, developing uh, your websites and your videos uh, to cater to that audience. And then finally, our favorite again, email marketing in the convert um, convert part of the internet marketing strategy. You need to target your company e email list with a coordinated campaign. The average open rate for, for emails across the board is 15%, but if you write your emails well and you test them, you hire a good email copywriter because the subject line is critically important to getting your emails open, you can get your conversion rate up to 30 or 40% or higher if you build a great relationship with your list. But email marketing is about a constant relationship with your list and, and providing them uh, not just with opportunities to buy your product, but with, with free, great content that people appreciate, which will make them uh, more receptive to your sales message. And you, again, you need to do constant testing of email campaigns to drive conversions. And many times it might take two, three, four, five emails to get people on your list to actually come back to your site and buy. But they will appreciate it if you do it right.